Okay, so um, next, Anne Jan, also widely known as the Jinx, from Amsterdam Hackerspace, we will talk about uh, QD Pass and the project which started uh, as a short two-day project and grew into something very exciting indeed. Thank you. <laughs> now to see how this remote works. Probably it doesn't. Well, the spacebar works. Um, my name is Anjan Brouwer. I'm a developer and hacker. I work at a, a company called No Protocol, uh, and I founded uh, or co-founded uh, one Amsterdam hacker collective called iHack. Um, and I started Cutie Pass, uh, which currently is at version 1.1.6. And we're working on a 1.2 release, uh, but um, QT Pass is pretty interesting compared to PassBolt. Uh, we started around the same time. We have one-tenth of the developers uh, or contributors, one-tenth of the commits of uh, PassBolt, but yeah, that's pretty understandable since it's in C++ instead of PHP. <laughs> um, but let's start at the beginning. I was working at a full service company uh, that had lots of clients, different clients, different projects, um, and many secrets per project to share and um, to use internally, which was a big problem because um, how do you keep those things? Well, in their case, a big Samba share with uh, per project, uh, a lot of files, a lot of folders, and a passwords.txt file. That's not a way to do it. And especially if you have external people working um, and have customers coming to your uh, office, connecting to the Wi-Fi, it was a public share. <laughs> so yeah, we needed something else. We needed a way to store passwords securely, to uh, share with coworkers, uh, with external people, preferably open standards, preferably open source, and it has to be easy to use. So we got someone working on uh, a project to find that into, in our company, and he found it in PASS, the standard Unix password manager, uh, which is um, found at passwordstore.org. It's a collection of bash scripts, basically. It uses OpenGPG. Um, it uses Git, optionally. It uses Tree to display um, a list of passwords, um, and it uses PWGen for password generation, optionally. Um, this is what it looks like, or might look like, if you have uh, some tests going on. Um, it was really nice. Um, the developers all loved it instantly. It's uh, very easy to use, it's automatable, you can just do tab completion on the tree structure. It f directly feels right. Uh, you can also use um, token-based authentication with the GPG, so uh, YubiKey or something. Uh, which you can then take from a uh, person when he leaves the company. So that's an added layer of, uh, of safety in there. But then we ran into a problem, management. Managers really don't like the command line. And for no good reason, not all managers of course, but <laughs> uh, with no good reason. So yeah, we had to find a solution to get management team on board. And that's why I thought, well, I know some Qt. Uh, let's uh, whip up a simple Qt uh, GUI application, tree view, place for uh, showing the contents of the password file, update button to uh, do a git pull, and well, that's very doable. So yeah, I uh, wrote that proof of concept in two nights, waiting for night buses in Amsterdam. <laughs> Laptop keeping me warm was pretty nice. Um, and it just uses pass in the back end and git. It was a simple wrapper uh, written in Qt. Um, it was read-only. Uh, I put it on GitHub and uh, did a small hackathon with a couple of friends um, to add translations. And then I sent a mail to the passwordstore.org mailing list uh, on August 1st, 2014, with uh, a not uh, to notify them, yeah, well, I've written this uh, simple read-only GUI thing. Uh, have a look at it if you find it interesting. And well, that was it a bit. Uh, oh yeah, I added native mode so you don't need pass. Uh, for example, on Windows you can't run bash scripts properly, uh, but you can use Git and GPG and um, so I added a native mode. 
I put it on GitHub, which by then didn't look as busy as now. <laughs> but I thought, well, that's, that's about it. Just uh, made a nice uh, thing. That's it. But then all of a sudden, Easter 2015, I got a lot of pull requests from uh, Reimer Duffinger, uh, who later met in Amsterdam for a beer. Um, and he added adding uh, and editing of passwords uh, in those pull requests. He added basic user management because password store, uh, pass, um, in the file tree, you can add a .gpg ID file in which you list the people uh, for whom it should be encrypted to. And that is pretty obtuse. It's just a, uh, a dot file in a dot folder. Uh, and uh, it has only the hashes or emails uh, of the uh, people's GPG uh, IDs. So it's a bit obtuse. He made a very basic user management to make it simple. And added uh, fixes for the Windows build that it would actually build on Windows. Uh, this is what the user management looked like after I started hacking on it a bit. Uh, added the search feature and the color coding system to see which keys are usable. And I really got enthusiastic again about developing on it because of yeah, some other people just joining in and, and started coding. So we added many, many extra options. Um, this is from version 1.0. And then in uh, August 2015, August 1st, exactly a year later, I decided, yeah, let's have a release party. <laughs> because why not? Everybody should do that. If you have an open source project and you don't have a 1.0 release yet, just pick an arbitrary date, pick an arbitrary goal. <laughs> have a release party. So in Amsterdam, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we did this in Amsterdam in uh, Café Batavia 20, uh, 1920, which is straight across from Central Station. I uh, did a little translation hackathon. I told everybody I'd buy them a beer if they would translate it to their language. So we got Hungarian, simplified Chinese. Uh, we, also <laughs> we also did uh, a, a soldering workshop. It was a very nice festive day. And we had a lot of beers, of course. So then QT Pass looked like this, which was a lot more interesting. We added uh, different profiles, so you can use uh, different password stores on your system, um, a private one, a company one, whatever. And we added something else, which you might have seen here, which is the splash screen, which has very clearly stating, please report any issues you might have with this software. And that really helps, because every time you start it, you get this notification, and you think, ah, something is broken, something sucks. It takes away all the boundaries for someone to just click the issues link, go to the GitHub, and add a new issue to the tree. So five days later, August 5th, I get a message. I'm waiting for the ferry in Amsterdam. I get a message. I, I looked into it, and I would like to hide the contents. We only had a hide password feature at that point. So I'm looking at it, and yeah, that's interesting. Someone who has uh, done C++ in the past would like to give it a shot. So I'm standing there waiting for my ferry to come step on the ferry and write a very simple summary of uh, where to look, what to add, what to do. And the next day, I get a pull request <laughs> with the feature. I mean, that's, yeah, that, that makes you enthusiastic about uh, doing more and more, adding more stuff. So then I thought, what else would be nice? Uh, password store, uh, Pass uses um, a preferred system of uh, naming fields, which is just colon separated, very simple. It's also used by the Firefox plugin, I think, for uh, login name and password and that kind of stuff. Well, password is always the first line. So um, for login, URL, that kind of stuff. So I added that feature, which was pretty uh, nice. But adding all those features has a downside. <laughs> um, it gets clunky and, and cluttery. So I thought I need to do something with that and looked into stuff. So I uh, set up Travis to uh, do Linux and Windows uh, and OS X builds, and um, also pushing to Coverity, which is a static code analysis site for open source projects is free to use, up to a certain amount of times a day. I can't exactly remember. But uh, static code analysis really helps. It finds bugs before they become bugs, uh, uninitialized variables, that kind of stuff. Um, and it, well, if you just run it, it's always there. You don't have to think about it. So 
the Travis file. If, if anybody hasn't done Travis yet and is doing uh, something with C, C++ or any other language actually, please set it up. It's very simple. It's a service that's uh, free for open source projects, etc. And this is a bit simplified. I took out some of the crap. But it just runs uh, the cute make. Um, and um, it notifies on success uh, only if, if there's a change. Uh, or on failure always. Um, so whenever there's something that doesn't compile on either Linux or OS X in either GCC or Clang, so four builds, I get a notification uh, on both IRC and mail. But yeah, then Windows. Uh, Qt is very nice in that it's a completely cross-platform. And I wanted to add uh, next to the OS X build, which we're now being done by Travis, by the way, um, uh, I wanted to do uh, Windows builds. So how do I do that? I download a VM from modern.ie because I don't own any Windows computers. I set up Qt Creator, um, uh, the ISS install creator studio, etc. Have to do that every month because the uh, VM license expires. It's really obnoxious. Luckily, I found that there's also AppVayer, which is exactly the same as Travis, only for Windows. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the syntax is a bit more clunky because Windows. Um, <laughs> but actually, every build um, I get, uh, the, an installer is made with the ISCC, uh, the installer builder. Um, and uh, whenever I do a tagged release, it's automatically uploaded to GitHub, so I don't have to uh, touch Windows VMs anymore. Happy, happy. Uh, if you need any help with this kind of setup with your own project, uh, feel free to contact me. No worries there. So yeah, we got more and more people contributing, um, doing a lot of UX changes, uh, making it nicer, uh, and starting to use iconography. We had a long discussion on uh, GitHub issue queue about this. Um, freedesktop.org has a nice system of uh, uh, setting up icons for stuff, uh, which is standardized and works on everything. Unfortunately, not on Mac OS or uh, Windows, so I changed uh, to SVGs for that. But um, yeah, adding a lot of new features, uh, for example, double click to edit, that kind of stuff. And we thought, yeah, time for another release, 1.1, um, which looks on a dark KDE theme, looks like this. On GNOME, looks like this. So it takes on your standard uh, preferred setup of uh, look and feel, really nice. Currently, we're working on a new release, a new big release, the 1.2 to release, oh, what did I push? Ah. Um, working on a 1.2 release. Yeah, um, we have currently uh, five active contributors who are uh, doing week, near weekly uh, commits and, and pull requests. Uh, we're doing a lot of refactoring and finally doing unit tests, although I have to admit I only added one unit test, which is for a static helper function function to always add a slash to a path. <coughs> but <laughs> there is now a possibility to run unit tests, uh, which are also run by Travis, etc. And again, we're doing a lot of UI and UX changes. So this is what the current master version of Qt uh, Pass looks like. Uh, we added copying buttons for the different fields. Um, and a lot more uh, stuff. Uh, also, you can now do ASCII art, uh, hence the <laughs> indentation, <laughs> in your password files. Always nice. Uh, we're thinking about adding a uh, possibility of doing binary uh, attachments, but not, um, not standardized on how yet. Uh, because it's running on uh, GPG behind the scenes, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, GPG can do binary attachments, no problem. That was about it. Any questions? <laughs> Someone has a question? No question? Ah, we have a question, yeah. Hello. Uh, I see that you are saving 
passwords, but only one password. Can you say, or is it planned to have multiple fields? For example, I, a comment, what password is it? Or maybe uh, uh, a login, a password, another thing? Uh, the passwords uh, currently have that option. Um, that's the field down below, where it, it currently says testing indentation and more indentation. <laughs> In this example, um, that's a completely freeform field where you can add whatever comments you'd like. Also, you can, in the configuration, set the fields you would like. For example, in this case, uh, password login URL test. Um, but you can also uh, click a button that allows any colon separated key value pair to be a field like that with a copy button. Okay, and does uh, that help? Uh, it helps, yes. <laughs> and now, uh, can you? Will you have a, some kind of template? For example, you. Uh, I want to add a. Uh, I don't know what a credit a credit card number. It has a fixed n uh, ah. level of fields. I haven't thought about that, but that sounds uh, like a, like an interesting feature. Yeah, um, that should be doable. <laughs> <laughs> ah, one thing else I forgot in the 1.2 upcoming 1.2 release, uh, there's also dragging and dropping of files and folders, and because you can set uh, for uh, every folder to whom it should be encrypted, for whom it should be decryptable. Um, everything gets re-encrypted as soon as you do a drag and drop operation which might pop up your uh, GPG passphrase or uh, something, which is a bit interesting. Um, adding passwords um, doesn't require any keys because GPG encrypting to someone, uh, to a public key, is, uh, uh, is a non-privileged operation. But decrypting, uh, you get uh, asked for your GPG decryption key, unless you have no password passphrase on your GPG. And we have a last question at the end. Hello. Um, I, I was asking if, if there is uh, something to ease uh, the creation of GPG keys for people that don't, uh, for managers and people that, that are not, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that well, don't like GPG. Uh, Qt Pass does have a nice key generator. If you start it up and you don't have a private key in your user, uh, or there's no private key available to GPG, you get presented with a uh, two-field option for name and uh, email address and a, a checkbox to um, enable uh, complete editing of the GPG uh, uh, key generation file. But, uh, well, we made it a simple two-step process. For example, uh, take a clean Windows uh, machine, install uh, Qt Pass. First thing it pops up is a link to um, the Win GPG, GPG for Win, something like that, um, for you to download GPG. As soon as you've done that, you get presented with a two-field option, name and email, and your key is generated, you can get going. And if you set up Outlook or, uh, for example, Mac OS Mail uh, with GPG tools, you automatically get the added benefit of uh, sending encrypted emails, uh, or at least signed, and that's uh, in our company when we started with Qt Pass. That was a nice added bonus because all of a sudden all the managers started sending encrypted emails. <laughs> Does that help? Does that answer your question? Yes, yes thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks for the talk. Let's applaud him.